Hey, okay, so I wanted to show you my Yu-Gi-Oh deck this time. I wanted to show you my Yu-Gi-Oh deck because I don't know when I'll ever really get the chance to show people this, but um, I wanted to show y'all because my, my Yu-Gi-Oh deck is something that uh, I've worked on for a long time, you know, like, uh, so just a little bit of a background. Um, I have been playing Yu-Gi-Oh since I was a kid, like, kind of like when it first came out in the US. My first memory of getting Yu-Gi-Oh cards was I was visiting Epcot in Florida and there's the Japan section of the of the place and they were having uh, a sale on Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but they were like Japanese like booster packs. Like they weren't printed in English at the time. I must have been like 11 years old <laughs> and it's it's just really interesting kind of like looking back on that time and being like oh my god wow just wow what a, what a, what a time you know um because now Yu-Gi-Oh is well over 20 years old and you know it's it's the, the rules have obviously changed since then the card structures and all that have changed since then um, and then I, I couldn't tell you, like, what my original deck was. Uh, I, I think, you know, looking back on some of the cards I was into at the time, maybe not the best, but um, in 2013, I kind of got back into Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I got rid of all my old cards, so I had to start collecting again. And I've been collecting new cards for the last 10 years, and... I think that's kind of cool, you know. Um, so I wanted to show you my Yu-Gi-Oh deck, the cards that I do have. Um, I do have more cards, but they're elsewhere and they're not in a deck, you know. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show you what I have. I don't have I do have sleeves, but like I, I I'm too lazy to put them in there, and I also don't play competitively. Also, there are some like illegal cards in this deck, meaning like, you know, I, I don't go to tournaments. I've never been in a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. I did participate in a Magic tournament once and lost on the first round, so whatever, you know. I'm not good at that, and, you know, I don't really play Yu-Gi-Oh now. I just kind of have this deck because it's kind of special to me, so yeah. Um, maybe I should get like a binder or something. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm also not going to read all the card effects, but I will read them if necessary, if, if I feel like it is. Um, all of these cards are cards I've used in a duel. And um, if you want to know what this specific deck's purpose is, like, it's not to win. It's to piss you off. Like, I've designed the effects of the cards to just piss you off. So, yeah, you'll see what I mean in a bit. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to be rereading the card effects just because like, or not all of them. I will read some of them just because like, I kind of want to get through the deck, you know, and I also don't want this video to be too long. But anyway, Heavy Storm, it basically destroys all spell and trap cards on the field. This one's really fun. It's uh, the Seal of Ori Calcos. This one's a field card. Um, oh, the field spell card. I'll read the effect to you. All monsters you control gain 500 attack. Once per turn, this card cannot be destroyed by card effect. While you control two or more face-up attack position monsters, your opponent cannot target your monsters with the lowest attack for an attack. When this card is activated, destroy all special summoned monsters you control. You cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck, you can only activate one seal of Ori. I mean, you can only activate seal of Ori Calcos once per duel. So there's some there's some drawbacks to it, but I think it's I think it's fair because like uh, I think I think the drawbacks are fair because like it is a pretty powerful card. It kind of you know it gives you 500 extra attack across the board, and it also protects your weaker monsters so that's pretty cool anyway um this one book of the moon or book of moon rather mirror force 
classic cards. You can't go wrong with Mirror Forest. This one's a lot of fun to just piss people off with, Dark Resonator. So it, it's a Fiend Tuner card. I, I don't have a I don't have any like extra cards, like an extra deck, by the way. Um, I don't use it for this reason anyway. But um, the the effect on this one is really fun because it's it's once per turn. And this card cannot be destroyed by battle. So what this basically means, and again, by the way, if I get some of these card effects wrong, like in their interpretations, be polite, but let me know in the comment section for sure. But Dark Resonator. Uh, it basically means like you have to attack you have to attack it twice meaning like like one monster and then another monster have to attack it and then it's destroyed and it's just it can be kind of annoying it's kind of like a stall a little bit you know <laughs> anyway um magic cylinder classic card can't go wrong with magic cylinder Zolga is a good one. I think I might have more than one Zolga in my deck, but I'm, I don't remember. I could be wrong. But uh, this one is a 1700, 1700 attack and 1200 defense. And the effect is when a monster is tributed uh, by tributing, hold on, when a monster is tribute summoned by this tribute card, the owner of this card gains 2,000 life points, which is pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> I have a lot of cards like that, actually. Um, Nightmare Wheel. This one's another card. I have a lot of cards that play with life points, like, that are kind of cool. Uh, target one monster your opponent controls. It cannot attack or change its battle position. When it leaves the field, destroy this card during each of your standby phases. While that monster is on the field, inflict five damage to your opponent. And what's cool about this card is that it's a it's a continuous card. You can see by the symbol here uh, next to where it says trap card. So it stays on the field and it does that like negative five hundred while your monster while your opponent's monster is stagnant. It's kind of cool. It's really awesome. I'm gonna save this card for later. This next card just because like I want to make sure I have the whole set before I explain what it is. Um, anyway, so Swords of Revealing Light, classic card. I think every deck should have a Swords of Revealing Light. Another card that's from the set. No, I don't have Exodia. <laughs> it's just FYI. I used to. Not anymore though. And it was like not a super rare version of it. It was just like from a box of something, you know. I gave it to a friend, though. I just felt like my friend should have it, you know. Draining Shield is a really good one. It's basically a card that, like, negates an attack, and then you gain whatever the attack of that power is. So, like, by life points, and it's kind of cool. Um, Stray Lambs. It's a really good one, especially if you're trying... Uh, actually, what's cool about Stray Lambs, if I'm not uh, mistaken... You cannot summon other monsters. Yeah, so I think you can actually, like, if, wait, like, when you put tokens on your field, like, with this one specifically, you can actually, like, tribute them for more powerful monsters. Because uh, I think there's a different version of that card where you can't do that, but I could be mistaken. Um, this one I actually seem to have added to my deck fa fairly recently. Um... But it's a really, really powerful, like, four-star, like, monster card. So, I added it to my deck for that reason. Just because it was like, you know, fuck, almost 2,000 attack points. What are you going to fucking do, you know? Okay, this one it is my favorite card in my deck. There's a few cards in my deck that I think are super cool. But this one I have to give, I have to... Hand it off to this card, Fiber Jar. I have to explain why this card is so important to me. Like, if you play Yu Gi Oh, you've seen this card, you know what it does, but I have to explain further. So, I got this card at Anime Expo in 2014. I didn't even expect to find this card. I was kind of like, okay, I'm going to go look for Yu Gi Oh cards. And this just happens to be a card that I was looking for at the time. Uh, and there was, a, there was a booth that actually had it, and it was just like $4, and I was just like, 
So I'm gonna fucking jump on that. Anime Expo Los Angeles 2014. I don't regret it. <laughs> but uh, what this card does is pretty cool because it's a flip card, meaning like if you attack this card, then it, it flips and then the effect comes into play. And I'll read the effect. It's kind of fucked up. It's basically uh, flip. Both players unite all of their respective cards on the field in their hands and in their graveyard with their respective decks and shuffle them. Then both players draw five cards from their shuffled decks. And what I think most people don't realize what makes this card so fucking deadly is that like when this card is attacked, especially when it's flipped, that usually means that like this card is you know, it's still during, like, that person's attack phase, you know, battle phase, and so that means during their main phase, if I'm not mistaken, you can't really, like, play monsters after that, especially if you already summoned a monster that turn, you know what I mean? Uh, so you can set, like, spell and traps after that, but I don't think, if I'm not mistaken, if you can play monster cards. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah... But if you have, if you've already summoned a monster that turn, you can't summon another monster, you know. And so some people forget that, like when they duel me for the first time, they see that card, they're like, oh, "No, you, you, I, I can't, you can't play that monster." No, you, you know, it's just whatever. Speaking of jar, I also got dice jar. This one's also pretty fucking deadly. Same flip uh, logic or function. Uh, so flip. Both players roll a six-sided die. The player with the lowest result takes damage equal to the opponent's roll times 500. However, if the winner rolled a six, the loser takes 6,000 damage. If the rolls are the same, both players roll again. So you can understand that this card has the ability to be so devastating it can potentially decide the duel sometimes uh and it can backfire it has backfired on me before but it's kind of fun for that reason you know <laughs> spell shattering arrow it's a cool card that basically uh inflicts 500 damage to your opponent uh for every spell that is on uh my side of the field This is part of the set. I think I have the whole set, but I'll save it for last. Um, <laughs> kind of funny, actually. It's Anarchist Monk Ranchin. When this card, your opponent, is sent to your graveyard by your opponent. When, when, wait, wait. When this card is sent to your graveyard. Ah. When this card it, that you control is sent to your graveyard by your opponent's card, either by battle or by effect, or is being destroyed, target one monster in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. Gonna abolish unjust hierarchies, bitches. <laughs> All right. Solemn wishes. This card is fucked up. Basically, it's increase your life point by 500 each time you draw a card or cards. So this is a continuous card. You can see by the symbol next to tra trap card. That basically means Every time I draw a card, I gain 500 points. You can't fucking do anything about it unless you destroy that card. That's kind of how it is. This one is Horn of the Unicorn. It's a classic card. This one's pretty fun. Boganian. Uh, it's uh, 1,300 attack, 1,000 defense. Uh, the effect of this monster card is that each of your standby phases inflict 600 damage to your opponent. So... You can understand that, like, a lot of these cards are about inflicting damage while I gain life points. So it's like when all of these are at play here, especially when I'm building that stuff, like, throughout the duel, it can be kind of devastating. Fissure. It's a pretty classic card. So <laughs> I'm not going to explain this one, but I just want to show it. I have an Egyptian God card in my deck. It's the only one that I like. I do like Cypher for his, like, you know, like, physical design, like, the art design. But I don't like the effect of Cypher. 
and I just don't like raw. Like I think raw are raw is kind of awful. <laughs> you know. Anyway. Um, so Burden of the Mighty is an interesting one. It's again kind of plays into the whole like unjust hierarchy kind of you know dynamic. But it's an interesting one. It's a, it's also a, a a permanent card, and uh, it it reads each face up monster your opponent controls loses one hundred attack. Uh, of its own level. So that basically means that like for each of these stars that it has on top right here, that basically means that it loses a hundred attack, which is a lot. And I mean, well, it, it can be a lot, you know, depending on the card. Uh, so it can be really fucking devastating for some, for, for some cards. Mask of Restrict is a pretty good one. I kind of added this one like by choice. Um, Basically, like, when you have a monster card that is really powerful, uh, this, like, on your side of the field, this one can be handy, because then, like, no monsters can be tributed. Monsters cannot be tributed. That's what the text says. So it's just, like, once you got a strong monster on the field, you can play that, and it's just, like, you know, you just screwed your opponent over unless you destroy that card. <laughs> Lucky Iron Axe is another classic. This one's always fun. It's just like whenever your whenever your opponent plays a monster and it's like a really good one and you play this one, it's just target one monster on the field, return that target to the hand. It's just like nope. <laughs> Cursed Bill. I actually have just added this one fairly recently. Uh when the equipped monster is destroyed and this card is sent to the graveyard. Inflict damage to the player who controlled the equipped monster equal to the monster's original defense. So I imagine this one is to be equipped to your opponent's monsters, if I'm not mistaken. Spellbinding Circle, absolute classic. Every deck should have one of those. This one's another new one. I have a lot of newer ones, I guess. Supply Squad. Um, once per turn, if a monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, draw one card. There you go. So I've got a I've got a classic old Jinzo right here. I love Jinzo. Jinzo is fucking great. Can't go wrong with Jinzo. Um I might have another Jinzo in here somewhere. Miracles Wake is a good one. Target one monster that was destroyed by battle and sent to your graveyard this turn. Special summon it from the graveyard. It's pretty handy. Pot of Duality. This one's really good because it's like it helps get your cards out of your deck a lot faster. Monster Reborn. Every deck should have one of these. United We Stand. Hell yeah. Classic card. Dark Hole. Classic card. Pot of Duality, Pot of Greed, <laughs> I play Pot of Greed, now this card allows me to draw two cards or something like that, Damage Translation, uh, half all of your, half all effect damage you take this turn during the end phase of this turn. Special Summon 1 Ghost Token Fiend Type Dark Level 1 Attack 0, Defense 0, and Defense Position each time you took Effect Damage this turn. Really helpful. Soul Exchange is a really good one, especially if you want to just like get rid of a monster that's on your opponent's side of the field and like Special Summon, like, or Tribute Summon a, a much more powerful monster. Dice Reroll. It's really good for that, uh, Dice Jar that I have. Scrap Iron Scarecrow. This one's kind of evil. Um, activate only when an opponent's monster declares an attack. Negate the attack and set this card face down again instead of sending it to the graveyard. So, kind of OP, actually. Amplifier. It's a good one because Jinzo actually... Uh, has a, an effect that allows, uh, well, actually forbids 
there to be trap cards on the field or you can't activate trap cards, but this allows you to be able to activate trap cards. So it's kind of nice. It's kind of like an exemplary thing. The trick is a good one. Uh, it's, a, it's an effect monster card. You can special summon this card from your hand by discarding it. Uh, I'm sorry, no, by discarding one card, not discarding this. So it's, it's 2,000 attack. And so that's a lot to just like drop on the field immediately. Black Pendant, that's a classic card. Dark Blade's another really high power, like level four monster. And then last, last but not least, until we get to the set, is Fiendish Chain. Fiendish Chain is always a good one. Okay. I thought I had more of this set, but I guess not. I guess I must have gotten rid of one of them. But, um, okay, so... Let's start with... Let's start with this one. So, Maju Garzette, right? Maju Garzette is... Is, uh... Is a, well, these are all fiends, basically. Yeah, these are all fiends, basically. So, the attack of this card becomes equal to the combined original attack of the two monsters you offered as tribute to tribute summon this card. So, as you can see, like, the attack right here is, like, a question mark, and it's meant to be adjusted for the tribute summon that you make. Uh, so, if you tribute two monsters, and they're, like, really high-level monsters, then you get an even more powerful monster because you combine those two to create this thing. So that's the first part. This one's even more interesting. Great Machu Garzette. Um, it requires one single tribute summon, which is, uh, it's, it's, it makes it easier to, to summon, but it's more preferred to tribute Machu Garzette uh, because the attack of this card becomes twice the original attack of one monster that you tributed to uh, the tribute summon of this card. So that means like whatever Maju guards that has, this will be double that. And then legendary Maju guards that, this is the last one. Cannot be normal summoned or set, must be special summoned from your hand by tribute, by tributing all monsters you control. And this card's attack becomes the combined original attack of the tributed monsters. If this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage. So, yeah, you can kind of see how that's like a recipe for absolute fucking chaos and disaster. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, I had fun showing you my Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Um, I didn't know I would ever make a video like this, but uh. You know, I'm glad I gave myself room to be able to do that. Peace.